For generations, mankind dreamt of going to the moon. That dream came true on July the 20th, 1969, when the eagle landed, and Neil Armstrong made his giant leap for mankind. Another lunar adventure began in September 2003 with the launch of the European Space Agency's Smart One satellite. Bernard Fuang is the head of science on the mission. We are going to observe the moon from a polar orbit and map its composition. Then we will build up bands of images and put them together to construct a high-resolution map of the lunar surface. Back on Earth at Nordwijk near Amsterdam in the Netherlands. ESA's European Center of Research and Space Technology. From here they control the new instruments on board Smart One. One of Huang's colleagues, engineer Jim Volp, says it's a challenging task. The problem is a bit that you are driving a car from a very far distance. Now we're not concerned about the engine, the car part, but we're more concerned about the passengers the payloads on board. Some instruments may want to be pointing at different things. One wants to look to the left, the other one wants to look at the same time to the right. We need to understand this and then make a decision. The mission was due to end this coming August, but has been extended for another year, right on thanks the to the ionic engine with a reserve of some 60 litres of exonon gas and an inexhaustible source of energy, the sun. The gas and the solar energy interact in a combustion chamber to create a highly efficient propulsion system. The engine's thrust is only 7 grams, the weight of a postcard, but with this method of propulsion, which is a little like blowing on your hand, it can reach the moon from the Earth in just 6 months. Since its 2003 launch, the one-meter-cube satellite weighing less than 400 kilos has traveled millions of kilometers spiraling out in orbits from the Earth until entering the Moon's orbit in November of last year. One theory suggests that the Moon could have been formed after an asteroid collided with the Earth more than four and a half billion years ago. The rock particles created by the impact then orbited the Earth, finally, forming under the effect of gravity a solid body. Smart One might be able to prove this theory by analyzing the geology and chemical makeup of the lunar surface. But Smart One is not only going to map the moon, it's also hoping to give a definitive answer to the question, is there water on the moon? The water could have arrived on the lunar surface via glacial asteroids or by solid water particles, contained in the tails of comets, pulled in by gravity. You can see the moon at the South Pole is riddled with craters. What makes them special is that at the bottom of these craters, sunlight never penetrates. Here you find the lowest temperatures in the solar system, something in the order of minus 200 degrees. So low, they could contain frozen water for a very long time. Then, around these craters, because of the moon's rotation, there are areas which are always in the sun. If proven, this theory could open the way to the colonization of the moon. Why is it so important to have frozen water and permanent sun on the moon? Because this would have an enormous impact on the possibility of lunar exploration. In particular, we could put landers down on these sunlit areas, which could eventually become bases, using solar energy, but also exploiting the frozen water in the craters. We'll use the information gathered by Smart One to define the next generation of missions and prepare for the next phase of robotic and human exploration of the Moon. The dream of walking on the Moon became a reality. Now, with the help of Smart One, the first small step to establishing a lunar colony is being taken.